Intonation in English helps you speak clearly, sound interesting, and be more understood. And if you use intonation well, you'll sound more fluent. But get it wrong, and it could be difficult to understand you, or worse, you might seem cold and rude. And I'm sure that you're a nice, interesting person, so we don't want your intonation to send the wrong message. But the good news is, it's easy to improve. And today, we'll see three more different intonations so that you can practice and feel more confident. I'm your English coach, Christina, and welcome to Speak English with Christina, step-by-step -step English lessons to help you learn faster, feel more confident, and reach your full potential. And today, like every week, I'll help you move one step closer to fluently speaking real American English. Let's go. Either or questions are questions where you give the listener a list of answers to choose from, like A or B. For example, do you want to go with me or stay here? Now, last week we saw three intonations for three of the most common types of English sentences. Statements, yes or no questions, and WH questions. Well, for either or questions, we find the same intonation as for the WH questions. The intonation rises and falls. It's going to rise on the first proposition, which in the earlier example was, go with me. Do you want to go with me? And so here it's a bit louder, it's a bit higher in pitch, but then the intonation falls on the second proposition, or stay here, or stay here. So listen again and then repeat after me. Do you want to go with me or stay here? Do you want to go with me or stay here? I think I'd choose to go with you just because, you know, there's an adventure, maybe something new to explore, something new to learn. You have to go for it, right? And you know what I always say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Anyway, let's look at our next intonation situation. Tag questions have a different intonation. And if you need a reminder, tag questions, you have a statement with a yes, no question at the end. There are sentences that can end with, isn't it? Don't you? Can we? Or aren't they? For example, and tag questions are pretty common in English. For example, you want to come with me, don't you? But here, the intonation rises at the end of the statement and then falls at the beginning of the question and rises again at the end. It's like a roller coaster to make the whole thing sound interrogative. Let me show you. You want to come with me, don't you? Try that. Try to repeat that. You want to come with me, don't you? It's a little complicated and it can feel a little funny at first, but with practice, it becomes natural quickly. Listen to these other examples and just repeat after me and try to do that rise, fall, rise intonation. We can give it a try, can't we? We can give it a try, can't we? Here's another one. They're ready to go, aren't they? They're ready to go, aren't they? Finally, lists have a special intonation pattern too, but fortunately, it's pretty easy. Listen and see if you can hear what I do with my voice when I list three things. I want to help others, enjoy my work, and have fun. I'll do it again. I want to help others, enjoy my work, and have fun. Did you hear? In the list, the intonation goes up on the first thing in the list, up 
on the second thing in the list and down on the last thing in the list. And this falling intonation says to your listener, "Hey, this is the end of my list." Listen to a real example. Take some risks, make some mistakes, and then learn from them. Take some risks, make some mistakes, and then learn from them. Did you hear it? Try this one with me. Now I understand intonation. I feel more confident, and I want to practice now. I understand intonation. I feel more confident, and I want to practice now. All right, good job. So now you know that every type of sentence has its own intonation, and it can change depending on what you want to communicate. But now you can start paying attention to English intonations and learn faster by observing, noticing, and especially practicing. And I've made a short playlist to help you practice spoken English. You'll find. Three more intonation exercises, fun games to pronounce common, difficult words in English correctly, and a lesson about shortcuts in everyday spoken English. Everything you need to start speaking with confidence. Just click on the screen to watch those. You're already one step closer to speaking more confidently. And if you want to continue the journey with me, I'll see you in the next video.